Hey guys, it's Zach Jack Dan with part four of progression of an action figure collection. This is my journey over the years from 2006 till 2018 of my Marvel Legends, Master of the Universe, DC Universe collection uh, classics, um, and other characters that I've collected over the years. Uh, bought and sold and bought and where the collection is now. So just talking about my son and what we did uh, as he was growing up, probably in fifth grade, I guess, he was in Cub Scouts. And we built one of those Pinewood Derby cars. And this was his design. This was a Wolverine Claw, as you see. Uh, he won third place in design. Uh, did not go too well with speed, but because uh, it was tough to get some weight up in the front section because it was so, so thin. But... Um, Pretty cool design. This is it before we put the wheels on it. So here's adding the third shelf to the room. Uh, we made a duplicate shelf of the one that we had built in our doorway at one time and put them side by side. Um, moved it from being on the wall, facing the wall right next to this to facing it out from this wall. And this is a, now the marble shelf instead of the DC shelf. And sorry about my blurry pictures back then, didn't have a very good camera. Lighting was bad, um, but uh, this was how the DC looked at this time once we have moved it from that smaller shelf over to this shelf. So technically, I guess the marble was bigger at this time because of the, uh, the fact that I had to add a new shelf. So this was DC getting moved to what we would call the smaller shelf at this time. This was, uh, guys, if you also see pictures of my son, I'll have his face concealed uh, just because I don't want to embarrass him. Uh, but this was uh, something we got at, I don't know where I got this, but this is one of the Marvel Masterworks, and it's the Mole Monster. Fits in really well with the collection. So here's the Galactic Shelf with Terax, Build-A-Figure, and I think that's the only thing new on here. But there's the Mole Monster on the shelf, along with Mole Man and everything. So he looks pretty good, I think. Here's the one of the X-Men Good Shelves. Nothing really new there. Hope was added to this shelf. This is the other X-Men good, good guy shelf. Here's the X-Men villains. Nothing really new there. Spider-Man Sinister Six type shelf. Nothing new there. Avengers good guy shelf. Uh, there's the Bucky Cap and the Steve Rogers. Those are the only thing new I see there. Here's the villains for Avengers. And you got Madam Mask, Constrictor, Claw, and Dakin here. These are all newer. And also in the background, you got Pile Driver and Arnim Zola. Another animal-based uh, Spider-Man shelf. You got a Vulture, a Wolf, an Octopus, a Scorpion, a Rhino, two Rhinos actually. A lizard and a beetle. So that was what this particular shelf was based off of. Nothing new though. Here is my symbiote slash spider shelf. And I had big time Spider-Man added here. That's about the only thing new. Maybe that manga Spider-Man might be new. Here's my Build-A-Figure shelf. The bigger ones that is. And it also has the, the Frost Giant. Fits in really well with them. From the Marvel Universe. And this is part of the Hulk shelf. On top of the newer two shelves together. Or the third shelf that is. Nothing new though. And matter of fact there has not been any new Hulk wave since this point. X-Men villains. Nothing new though I don't think. This was all I had for Iron Man at that time. My armory has grown drastically since the, this point. So this is the point where DC started outgrowing my Marvel. And this was the one part of DC that I regretted selling was the Blackest Night figures that I had. These were amazing looking detailed sculpts. Um, I know they were mostly DC direct figures instead of DC Universe. But uh, when I bought that lot, I was really excited. Some of my favorite ones on here were the Batman in the background there, the Martian Manhunter, Flash, Aquaman. 
and Firestorm is pretty cool. And then on the far left, that's other Superman from another Earth. That was a really good one. So here's the green, yellow, blue, red, orange, star sapphire lanterns all combined together in one shelf. I got to the point here where I couldn't even name them all. I had such alien names, I guess. Loved those guys in the background right there. Shark, Archillo, Atrocitus, Larflees, Kilowog. A few movie figures right here in the middle. And guys, that movie wasn't that bad. Some of the metal men. This is when Matty Collector started uh, selling them online. So we got uh, Lead and uh, the woman. I can't remember her name. And then the little guy. I think his name's Ten or something like that. They came from Matty Collector. Uh, this is the Justice League villains. The Justice Society 5 set. The San Diego Comic Con Lobo with Dog. That was a great figure. And back left, you have what now are two of the more expensive uh, DC collecting collect, collect and connect figures. Uh, I saw that Giganta went for 189 recently, and Solomon Grundy went for about 150 recently. So those those I kind of let go of for way too cheap for price. Here's the Batman shelf. Love that clay face back there, and the uh, San Diego Comic Con White Man back. Wham Man Bat in the background there. Mad Hatter was really cool. I liked him. I know that was DC Direct. Justice League. You got SDCC uh, Plastic Man there in the front. Big Barda and Mr. Miracle were at it, it looks like. Satana. I don't remember if I ever showed her on the shelf yet. Here's the JSA shelf. You got the uh, Jay Garrick flash there from Matty Collector. This was uh, continuing uh, talking about that uh, custom that I was trying to do for the wizard. There's his head, body I threw away, the arms that I took off, junk torso from the old junk. Got rid of the leader's head and his hands because I didn't use those. And that's what it would end up looking like when I put it together. I had to take a Dremel and Dremel out the uh, hands so I can fit them onto the leader's arms and Dremel out the head so it would fit on the uh, the ball joint there. This was a little battle scene that, that Zach built for the uh, DC stuff. Pretty cool. This didn't stay, of course, but uh, this was a really neat little setup he decided to do. So we came uh, back home from one of our Charlotte Comic Cons. Uh, this was the Heroes Convention, and this was our haul from that day. Pretty good haul, got it for a really good price. Some rare stuff. But this was the rarest, the uh, San Diego Comic Con X-Force box set. Got for about 120, goes for about 350 now. So that was, a, that was an exciting purchase. I think that might have been our first San Diego Comic Con we bought out, actually. This was a Christmas, probably one of the bigger Christmases that he had, um, figure-wise. That's those, those probably the most figures he got during the Christmas. Um, of course, that Build-A-Figure Christmas he had a couple years ago was the largest figures that we'd gotten. Because they don't make them that size anymore. But you got uh, Mirror Master from the Matty Collector, uh, DC Direct uh, Vixen, very pretty, pretty figure. The Guardians. Uh, Anti-Venom from Marvel Select, Smart Hulk from the Hulk Classics Wave, really cool figure. Rhino from the Sinister Six, I think, box set possibly. Uh, Wrecker from the Rocket Raccoon Wave, Joe Fixit. We got um, Metallo build a figure, Ronan build a figure. Uh, that Two-Face Harvey Dent, he's uh, pretty rare at that time. The Brimstone build a figure back there. That Parademon right there is actually a pretty rare one, that red one. 
Avalanche right there is rare from the X-Men Classics. You see Ares build a figure back there. Mansoor Mala and Brain on the right hand side there. Salak from the Green Lanterns. He's rare. And uh, Metron in his chair. That's another Maddie Collector. So this is basically the end of the DC Collection and DC Classics, DC Universe Classics. And we tried to start going into the New 52 stuff uh, to see if we can continue on in our DC Collection, but it just didn't work out. This was uh, Christmas whenever Zach came out and first saw his Christmas uh, stuff from Santa. We got Groot, Black uh, Goliath from the Marvel Universe stuff. Fits in with the build figures really well. Patriot from the Young Avengers from a box set. Uh, Crossbones from the Ares build figure wave. The DC Direct um, Multiverse or whatever you want to call it. Um, what do you call it? The Vampire Bat, whatever it is. That was a pretty cool figure. Adam Strange, back in the back behind that. Huntress, Shazam, Red Robin, Joker, uh, Etragon, Bizarro, that's Supergirl right there. I uh, can't remember what that purple lantern dude or his name is. Some kind of monk, I think. And then again, that's the Maddie Collector box for the Phantom Stranger. So this Christmas, uh, Zach got me this particular three-pack from Target. And I actually picked him up, if you look on the far left there, the uh, loose uh, radioactive man. So we both got radioactive man for each other that year. Got the AIM agent. Deadpool from the Toys R Us box set with uh, Warpath. Uh, of course, this is after we've opened up all the gifts. We add, we always add it to the fireplace to kind of take another picture of it and see what it looks like. So this was what Christmas looked after we opened everything. I uh, got the Puck Builder figure there. Lex Luthor. Maddie Collector. Um, Bizarro Batman. And I like that Blue Lantern uh, elephant. That was pretty cool looking. And then also the clown, uh, the twin. I think his name is Hammer, and his brother's name is Sickle. You'll see him later. This was a pickup we got at Rebel Base one day for a pretty good price. Kind of some obscure stuff. That Parademon from the New 52. That Venom monster thing. This was uh, coming back from another hero con, getting a bunch of uh, loose stuff. And this was the new 52 that we're talking about here that uh, we started trying to build on to. Really neat looking figures. Not a lot of articulation. But good, uh, good molds. Good designs. This was some other stuff we picked up at that convention. Cersei, uh, Evil, Supergirl, Stargirl. That rogue that I was really seeking out. But now that we've got the new one from the Juggernaut Wave, she got sold really fast. Uh, Fat Bat, Batgirl from New 52, and then there's Sickle right there, the other brother from the Twins. I think that's from some kind of Arkham game, Arkham video game. So this was a birthday party. Uh, one of his friends picked up one of the figures from a target brought it to him he's always excited when he gets a somebody actually picks him up a figure at a uh, for a birthday because they're thinking about him um but they let him know yeah we saw a lot more figures there at target so right after the birthday party we ran out to target and picked up the rest of the wave so we could build both of the odin and the uh old man thor so that was a pretty cool birthday got a lot of extra stuff for that birthday because we weren't expecting to buy all this this was Easter. You got that uh, Swamp Thing figure for the New 52. Here's the Marvel shelf at this time. At that time, I should say. All the build -a -fig bigger build figures on the what I will consider an addition to the third shelf. Because I just threw those extra little side shelves there beside the window. And they fit in really nice right there. So again, we got Hulk up on top. Not sure if I had Mecha Hulk uh, in any of the other pictures, but you see Mecha Hulk over there on the left. 
X-Men on the top uh, four shelves there. Spider-Man on the next three to four shelves. Kind of mix Street Heroes in with that. Avenger stuff on the next four shelves. And the Galactic and Fantastic Four on the bottom shelves. Iron Man Armory looks like it got a little bigger in this picture. I think I only had like six in the previous Iron Man picture. This was the DC collection at the time. We threw another uh, shelf up top on this particular one. Give us the tear effect. And that allowed us to expand the Green Lanterns and the Black Lanterns and all that good stuff up top. That was my favorite part of this collection. But this was the point that it was getting sold. You see the DC New 52 stuff in the bottom right. Again, sorry about the picture quality. Kind of sucks that I don't have really good pictures as the collection was ending. This did get sold for about $5,000 on eBay. So that we can continue collecting the Marvel Legends. Batman was the centerpiece there. Had kind of a mash of stuff at the top left there with the uh, Metal Man and some, uh, what are they called? Elastigirl and all them guys. I can't think what that name is. They're about to come out with a TV show for that. The Superman stuff below that. JSA top right. Justice League right below that. Teen Titans on the bottom there. On the left, I should say. Because we had gotten to a point of not really having anything to collect with DC, I was like, well, maybe I should just start collecting all the Batman figures I could find. So I started grabbing them. Never got into the shelf. Never got into the collection or adding a new shelf, I guess, to, to build these in there. Pretty much at this time, I bought them. was ready to give them to them as a gift. And then we decided, not we're not doing this no more. And I sold them all. Jason Todd, Batman, Harvey Dent, uh, Two-Face Batman. Those are pretty cool looking. Selling this junky looking figures. So once we sold that for the 5000 I was like, oh man, I want to collect He-Man again. So round two of my He-Man collection, I went and bought the 2000X uh, stuff back again. Bought this Ikea shelf to display them in. And... Started my journey again through my childhood by adding He-Man to it. And it didn't last long because I pretty much got the collection right away. Um, pretty much, I think, in three lots that I bought on eBay, I, I ended up getting everything that I needed. And there was only one thing, if you look at the bottom shelf, that I did not have, and that was a snake armor He-Man. So this um, collection kind of combined also the... Motu Classics, or Master Universe Classics that came from Maddie Collector, because you'll see on the Horde shelf uh, at least four figures from that. Uh, Catra and Scorpia, Scorp Scorpion, or whatever her name is. Uh, some Claw dude in the back behind that, and uh, Moduloc. And I don't see anybody else from that. You'll see it later what I actually had whenever I go to sell it. But uh, all right there at the top left, you also see that uh, that winged monster. I can't think what its name was. That uh, beast man would usually fly. That was also Motu Classics. But buying this collection, I bought uh, bought it loose, whereas before I had every single one of them in package. This way, I was able to buy them and took up way less room. And I was able to get the two that I didn't have last time, which was the Jitsu and the Mosquito. When they both came, I had spent around $500 on just those two to get them. When they came, um, Mosquito's leg was broken off and Jitsu's ponytail was broken off. So I got an insurance claim and was able to pretty much get them for free. So this set right here of all this stuff only cost me around $800 instead of $1,500 that it would have cost me because there was another insurance claim on something else. can't remember.
But I love that Statue of the Grey Skull uh, out of box this time. Not as cool as the other stuff, but it, it works out really well for display. Sorry about the picture quality, guys. I love the horde, though, and I love some of those uh, snake men, the squeeze and the tongue lasher, especially. So if you notice now on the bottom shelf, you'll see that I did finally get the snake armor He-Man. And I do see the snake version of Tila there, which is an exclusive. And Madam, Madam something, Madam Roz and Broom I have right there as well. So I got to add those to the collection and then I decided to sell it. So this was the pictures on eBay that I sold it for. Sold this uh, lot for this, this whole set for around $2,000. So I made a lot, another profit. That got added to collecting Marvel Legends again. So in my opinion, I think that the reason for the downfall of the 2000X He-Man stuff was because of that Mossman right there in the middle, which is a mail away. Uh, they told you basically to just send in a receipt showing that you had purchased three He-Man figures. And I think a lot of people would just send in a receipt and then took those figures right back to the stores, which made the stores look like that. Oh, He-Man's collecting is not any good. Nobody wants it. That's just my opinion. I don't know. Somebody might comment if y'all feel the same way about it, but... Uh, because I thought the 2000X show and the figures were amazing. So I have two vehicles in this particular uh, collection. And here were the five Figures I never even added to the collection uh, from the Motu Classics. I just, I got, I got tired of it. It wasn't anything that my son was interested in, so it didn't go anywhere. Some extra junk that I had in the, the sale, so I had an extra evil in, kind of a variant. And then I did have the boxes for the exclusives and the uh, Castle Grey score that I sold it with. that was it for He-Man for me. So here's the only Marvel now. So we've got this whole shelf over here where we used to have our DC. Now we have Spider-Man on the left, Iron Man in the middle, Avengers stuff on the right. So this was the Juggernaut Wave that we picked up at a Walmart or something. Opened it up, built it. Very nice wave. I didn't have any complaints about this wave except for the cable. Maybe the Havoc. I would have rather had the Havoc that they showed us at San Diego Comic Con that one year. All right, guys, that's it for this uh, part four. Go back and watch part one through three and stay tuned for part five of Progression of an Action Figure Collection from Zach Jack Dan. Hope you guys enjoyed this nostalgia here of going back through collecting hit the like subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell so you're aware of any of the new videos that i post and i'll talk to you guys later